And this is the Mercedes-Benz Rangers postgame show. And when the Rangers needed 62 minutes tonight with less than their best against a pesky opponent, the moment called for a hero, and it was Miller time. <laughs> Welcome inside our Delta MSG studios, everyone. John Giannone alongside Steve Valiquette. Rangers 5-4 over the Sabres. We've heard that before. Second time this year that has happened with that score. But the Rangers on a night, Steve, where, you know, four minutes into the game, you figured, all right, this was going to be another cakewalk, yeah. and there wasn't much cake for a long part of this game. Well, they learned that lesson last Tuesday against the Devils. Same idea. It made me feel like, you know, it was a moment where, all right, guys, did you learn your lesson from last week? And I'm sure that Gallant would have had that message on the bench or at least in the locker room after the first intermission. But what I'm seeing right now is I get the sense that like Chris Drury's hit on all these players. When you look at the impact that Vetrano has, Mott, I love watching that guy play. I mean, he's got an engine and he goes and cops getting points. I mean, I like those pickups, John. I mean, that's that's really my takeaway from this game. It's we've seen this team all year, but have the additions added value? And and my feeling is yes in every aspect of the game, especially when you talk about you know Mott's ability to help on the PK and everybody seems to have an engine, and I, and I like that because the team was already fast, but now you've gotten faster, and you can see it on the goals. Uh, Geez, four out of the five goals were off the rush. Mm -hmm. Those are off the rush goals because the Rangers have a lot of speed and they're hard to contain. Yeah, and it was a night in which, as you said, the the newest players were main contributors in this one. Andrew Kopp with two goals, uh, I'm sorry, two assists, including the game-winning goal. And that came from Keandre Miller in overtime. His 11th career goal, the first time he has scored in overtime, and he was on the ice for a reason. It started at his own blue line yeah. and it ended in front of the other net. And see, that's where you key into stuff right because as his season's gone along he's gotten stronger in front of the net and that's the key for me because whoever defends their front of the net the best most nights in this league wins the game and because you're defending well in front you get the benefit of being able to transition as a group because you have five in the pitcher low where you can come up with speed and obviously in overtime you don't have those types of numbers but you get a stop there and it just helps it helps you it goes a long way and now you're moving down the ice and you've got opportunities to score but, you know, you, you talk about Keandre and his growth this season. He's opened up offensively because his defensive game has gotten stronger. And that is great news for the New York Rangers because when you need a shutdown pair in the playoffs, as much as we want to talk about Fox and Lindgren, there's going to be a lot of big minute moments that he and Truba have to play together and shut down top players. So that's what I look for. The, the bigger sign to me, I love the goal. But I'm just happy for the young man because he's defending better in front of the net. Yeah, so that gave, that made a, a winner of the Rangers on this night. And, you know, it was, a, it was a game really that you wondered which way it was going to go after the Rangers took the big early lead and then the Sabres scored three in a row. It entered the third period tied and it didn't take long for the Rangers to take the lead. And it was an Artemi Panarin goal again with Andrew Kopp contributing an assist. You know, it's been interesting, too, is Cop was great off the faceoff, but I'm also looking to the delivery that Truba has from the point. We've seen the defensemen, and it's been sneaky. The defensemen have been sneaky good collecting points this year. They're right up at the top of the league when you look at goals and assists and contribution from the point. But Truba, we know about his 10 goals, but to me, this is the goal. The goal is the way that he allows this puck to lay in on Anderson's pads. Yes, Goudreau helps a little bit with some screening, but it's really the play to the net and I mean he looks like the goaltender there Anderson looks a lot like Tucker for those of you that have ever seen something about Mary when Tucker <laughs> drops his keys and he's kind of like struggling to pick him up yeah. and I'm, I think that's the way I'd look but all jokes aside I mean Anderson's 41 years old mm -hmm. in two months you know and I can't imagine playing in the NHL at 41 years old that's why uh, I had a lot of confidence this was going to be a win the Rangers just didn't need to overpass in some of these instances. It was one pass sometimes. There's an open net. I'm like, shoot it! You know, and they were looking for extra plays when you don't have to do that against an older goalie. And that's why there's not a lot of 40-year-old goalies in the league. It's just right. the way it is. They entered the third period tied in no small part because of what the Rangers were able to do in the second half of that second period. First half of the period was controlled by Buffalo. They scored twice, went from 2 nothing down to 3-2 up. Mm -hmm. But then the Rangers were able to tie the goal. And it was a good sign for Alexi 
Alfie Lafreniere not only to score his 15th, but to score only about a minute after he was stopped on a, an all-alone break -in. Yeah, so he has that play, and then you stick with it. Uh, another thing that I really liked about the goal, John, was that Heedle was able to make the play from the middle on his backhand. If you're going to play center on the offensive side of the puck, you have to be uh, very depth at being able to pass backhand side as well as forehand side. Uh, once again, off the rush, they're coming up as a group. Lafreniere's job is to drive back post. Heedle's job is to push everybody back with a middle lane drive, but Buffalo collapses three on him, and that's why he's on his backhand for the pass. It's really a, a layup or a dunk for Lafreniere, but they all follow up that play really well. Um, again, I, I want to give Credit to Heedle being able to manage that puck because three came hard on him. Um, but again, back to looking at Buffalo net front, they're the worst team in the league at being able to read and make the right decisions. They incorrectly sent three people on Heedle there. So Lafreniere now with points in six straight games. So that's what transpired in periods two, three, and then the two-minute overtime. But the first period was a eye-popping beginning, <laughs> yeah. both for the Rangers and one of their newest players, and that's Frank Vetrano, who in a span of 18 seconds put the Rangers up 2 nothing. He just has so much speed, and when you play him with Kreider, and Zibanejad's adds a burner in his own right, too. You've got three really fast skaters, and we've seen a lot of goals this season where the Rangers win one forward. They win it forward almost like an, a loss on purpose because you can send two guys with a ton of speed three zones quickly. Kreider, amazingly to me, stays on side here. He barely breaks stride, which really makes it difficult for the Sabres to defend, and shooting from 43 feet here, uh, this was a 1% chance to score. You are not supposed to. In fact, if I was on the bench uh, as a coach, I, I would be yelling not to shoot that. <laughs> but at any rate, it goes in because there is an element of surprise here. Now, Tage Thompson, he, he, he makes a gaff here. He blows this one up and then blows a wheel. But the way that Vetrano was able to read it and then get to that very important spot, when you see the Rangers score, when they shoot it, it's always at the bottom of the hash because that's exactly the decision point where the goaltender is beginning his backup from the top of the crease. And you know what else? I really want to see the pure shooters shoot on breakaways. You know, you want to see that. I don't want to see a guy like Vetrano skating in and making five moves when it's really making it easier for the goaltender because he's taken away your shot. What goalies are trying to accomplish is first take away the shot and force a deke. Well, Vetrano doesn't allow that to set up. We saw Kreider do it last week. I like to see the guys that are quick to shoot the puck, bottom of the hash mark, it surprises the goalies. Vetrano now with four goals as a Ranger. That was the two quickest goals scored by a Rangers player since Yaramir Yager did it in 14 seconds back in 2005. So